Yes, we just had our, our this one this year was the fifth one. We will have the sixth one. Uh, the, it'll be in the first week of March, the first weekend of March, uh, at the same location where it was. I would really encourage you. We had over 1,200 people there, uh, a lot of young people as well, uh, and we had phenomenal speakers. Go to the Bringing America Back to Life website. You can look at what the last program was and see some of the speakers. I don't think we've nailed down every speaker just yet, so the agenda is probably not on the website yet, but it will be very short. Yes, Dr. You know, I was, I think it was a little unclear about the thing, but the French Revolution was not about life, liberty, and property. That you don't, because it was, it was fraternity, egalite, and liberté. Right. And those three, and that was really the beginning of modern liberalism, which you stated just a few points later, mm -hmm. that it really is. That is the genesis and beginning of progressivism, modern liberalism, but I don't think it's particularly tied to the American Revolution. They were totally radical, crazy, and uprooting of everything. American Revolution was conser conservative. That was the liberal monster in the beginning. Right. A lot of evil things. So I would just there, there was there was a lot of linkage within the, some of the writings. Uh, certainly, I have to agree with you that. Well, minus few and those before the philosophers were right. talked about our government that influenced our founding fathers, but not that Rousseauian kind of stuff, and then right. Shakespeare and others are. No, they influenced what became the liberal progressive. Absolutely, yeah, right. absolutely. Right. Yeah, perfect. great, great point, great point. Other questions? Yes. I was curious why on your chart of the governments why you had. Communism right next to anarchy. It just seems like to me that communism, the government has the most power, and and, and therefore would preclude anarchy. Is that? Yeah. Well, yeah right. right. Well, to achieve to achieve communism, if you look at, at the Soviet where the Soviet Union started with Russia at the time, um, early in, in the last century, um, there was a there was a great period of anarchy in that country, which led to and accommodated the beginning of what we, we came, came to be known as communism. So um, uh, anarchy is, is, is not a state of government. You're not going to have a, you know, a country that is run by anarchists, but anarchy is a means to an end, typically. Uh, but I was thinking, like, when communism was established, the government then, like, took all of the control over the free markets and the state also. Correct. Right. Yeah. So uh, the, you know the, the the dictatorships, despots, and so on that, that I re referred to earlier. Um, you know, again, it's it's another another brand that it's been called socialism. It's been called lots of different things over time. But the whole point is, what you want to look at in any governance structure is um, where is the power and the authority, and how is it derived? If it's derived from a democratic process you know, where the people have a say, so like as we have in this country with elected officials, and if we don't like them, we can throw them out. Um, you know, obviously the government has power in this country, but it's derived from the power given to them by the people through the processes yeah. we have. Yeah, in right. dictatorships and communism, socialism, you know, uh, that's not there. Power is derived by, by those who have it, okay? And they, they just take it from the people. I, I think he's talking about when, I, when we talk about that liberal spectrum and champion, yeah. We put the fascist and the National Socialist Party, which were the Nazis, right. on the left. We think it's misturned. It shouldn't be on the right. It should be on the left. And we would take anarchy from the left and put it as a radical extreme of total liberty. And it would be a technology of total okay. liberty. Yeah, that's, so we, we yeah. flip them a little bit. And all those monolithic state government things is all a manifestation of the left. Right. That's Okay, it depends whether you're looking at classical or it, as today. Correct. Good, good, good. Thank you. Excellent. Any other questions? Yes, sir. This is just a quick comment, and folks may agree or disagree with it, but since we have our young people here, they, more than anything, I, I know for me, what really helped me was knowing history about the Bible, you know, the, the Christian church and all the church, church history, and then world history, and learning from it. And this is what our, you know, our young people really could use more of because, see, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be us tomorrow. They're going to be our right. country tomorrow, our right. world. It's a great point. We'll make a quick last comment here. Uh, Go I ahead. teach a, since I've been retired, I teach a class, a couple classes at one of the local colleges. 
And one was on, the one I'm teaching this, this semester is on uh, negotiation and persuasion techniques. And uh, these are early 20s kind of students, typically, one or two exceptions. And uh, I like to use historical negotiation processes as examples, as opposed to how do you save money on a refrigerator at Sears. And um, I asked the question, you know, I, I gave him an assignment to go research the Versailles Treaty. Hmm. And I might as well have asked them <laughs> to talk about the Talking sex life of a ping pong ball. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, uh, they, don't, they don't know. And I realized World War I was 100 years ago, so, you know. Uh, but then I said, well, I'm, let's get a little more recent. And let's talk about the negotiations that went on during the Cuban Missile Crisis. They continued to look at me like, right, right. talking about Exactly. It? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I realized they weren't born during that time, but at least in you know, history, they should have. I mean, that was our country on the brink of a world war, a nuclear war. And you'd think that you can't go through high school or college without somehow being exposed to that. But we do have to educate our children and our grandchildren so that they, they are not going to be easy marks for those who would do us in. Exactly. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you.